If you have a smart speaker like an Amazon Echo, a Google Nest, or an Apple HomePod, you've probably wondered if it's listening to everything you say, and if it is, what it's actually doing with that information. So let's start from the top. Yes, your smart speaker is always listening, otherwise it wouldn't be able to hear the wake word. This is called passive listening, and it's a low power state that looks for a particular phrase, after which point it begins actively listening. The difference between these two states is how it handles what it hears. In the passive state, it records and processes everything internally or locally, so the recording never actually leaves your house. And even the word record is used loosely here because it works on a very short self-deleting loop where the next few seconds overwrites the previous few seconds. Now, some people believe that even in this passive state, your smart speaker is still spying on you, recording everything you say, and secretly transmitting it over the internet. If you've ever talked about something and then seen that thing later in an ad, there's a good chance you're one of those people. The problem with this idea is, it's impossible to move data over your own network without it being detectable at some level. If this were happening, it would have been exposed a hundred times over by now. And I don't mean anecdotal evidence, I mean hard verifiable data. Even if you could somehow argue that, you're talking about processing and profiling 24 seven audio across hundreds of millions of homes around the world, all while breaking multiple wiretapping laws and risking being at the center of the biggest scandal in human history. Even for companies like Amazon and Google, that just doesn't make sense. It's far too expensive, far too risky, and it's also just unnecessary given how much of our personal data we already give them access to. If we go back to those suspiciously timely ads, for example, they don't need to record everything you say because they already have enough data and tracking capability to target you with that level of accuracy. Your search, social, and location history alone is enough to build an extremely accurate profile around your likely interests, including of those you've recently interacted with. And that last part is really important. For example, if a colleague tells you they just bought a washing machine, chances are they recently searched for washing machines and now their proximity to you infers a similar interest or need. And sometimes they still get it wrong. Maybe that person decides not to tell you about their new washing machine and you see the ad anyway. Except this time you pay no attention to it because it has no relevance. It's easy to forget when it misses, but when it hits and the algorithm succeeds at what it's trying to do, only then do you really stop and take notice and it can start to feel like it's tapping into your conversations. Of course, all of that relates to passive listening. The active listening state is a very different story. Once you say the wake word, your smart speaker records everything you say immediately after and sends it to the cloud where it can be processed by an advanced language algorithm. Just as a quick side note, supposedly this processing can't happen locally because it requires too much computational power, but some large language models are starting to challenge this notion. I'll save that one for another video. So let's talk about active listening because this is where things get a bit tricky. Once your request has been processed, interpreted and fulfilled over the cloud, what happens to your recording after that depends on which company you're talking about. Both Amazon and Google will typically store your recordings until they're deleted from their respective apps, assuming they do actually delete them at the source. Even if that's to be believed, for anyone who doesn't know or care to do that, which let's face it is most people, they basically keep these recordings forever. But here's where it gets interesting because it's no secret Amazon and Google use this data to improve their service, presumably to fine tune things like voice recognition and natural language processing. What they're not quite as open about though is how they use this data to serve us targeted or personalized ads which we do know is happening. In fact, a recent report used fake personas to demonstrate how Amazon uses Alexa data to serve targeted ads, not only on Amazon, but also across the web in general. And I will link that report below if you want to dig into it. When Amazon were asked for comment, they more or less admitted to it 
saying, similar to what you'd experience if you made a purchase on Amazon.com or requested a song through Amazon Music, if you ask Alexa to order paper towels or to play a song on Amazon Music, the record of that purchase or song play may inform relevant ads shown on Amazon or other sites where Amazon places ads. Now, Apple is another company in the mix here and they are a lot more privacy centric compared to Amazon and Google because they don't rely nearly as much on advertising revenue. The upside to that being that Apple can afford to handle all of this data sharing quite differently. For one, all Siri recordings are assigned a unique identifier and are not linked to any one specific account. So there is a layer of anonymity there. They also don't save your voice recordings to the cloud unless you opt in as opposed to having to opt out with most other platforms. And by extension of that, they don't use voice data to target you with personalized ads. Of course, you could question any of those statements, but Apple is widely regarded as the best of the big three when it comes to respecting user privacy. So with all that said, where do we go from here? If you really care about your privacy and protecting your data, then the easiest and most obvious solution is to avoid using smart speakers altogether. But that would deprive you of what I'd consider a very helpful tool when it comes to interfacing with your smart home, particularly controlling devices on demand. It's also a great way to give control to family members who have no interest in building automations around their daily habits. So given that, there are a few good options. First is to use whatever smart speaker you want and then opt out of any and all data collection from within the app. If you still don't trust that, then another option is to use Apple HomePods and HomePod Minis since, as I said, Apple are a lot more privacy centric. If you don't trust Apple either, then you should probably look at building a local only DIY solution using something like Raspi or Assist through Home Assistant. There's a lot more work in setting up a local assistant and they're not quite as capable as the big three, at least not yet, but it is the only way, at least that I'm aware of, to maintain complete control over your data when using voice assistants. Finally, if all else fails, the other option is to simply accept that your data is the price you pay for the convenience and affordability of this technology. I know a lot of people will immediately oppose that, but if you understand what you're giving up and you know the risks involved and you still feel it's worth it for you, then it's worth it for you. Absolute privacy is a nice idea, but in reality for most of us, it's really about balancing privacy with convenience. And fortunately, we each get to decide on an individual level where we draw that line. As for me, I have an Amazon Echo and I will probably switch to Apple HomePods in the near future. But as someone who carries a smartphone, who uses social media, I feel that having an Echo in my home is consistent with my tolerance for data sharing, which is obviously very high. But that's just me. I'd love to know what you think of all of this. I know this can be a controversial subject, so I am expecting some pushback in the comments. If you disagree with anything I'm saying, I only ask that you keep it respectful and I will be happy to engage with you. Otherwise, check out my other videos on screen now. And if you haven't already, do subscribe. It makes the number go up and that makes me very happy. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one.